Hello, everyone. Phil Lee returning with another episode of Civil War Chat. Today is Thursday, the 9th of February, 2022. Click on the subscribe button down here in the lower right to subscribe to future episodes and also the notification bell in the far upper right, which will notify you when the episodes are released. Uh, and uh, today's topic is uh, everything will be all white. The latest documentary from Showtime is titled Everything Will Be All White. It is an anti-white racist screed that Showtime promotes with a two-minute trailer that immediately appropriates the work of white composers as background music. It begins with an excerpt from the overture to Mozart's Marriage of Figaro and segues into Beethoven's Ode to Joy from his Ninth Symphony. It is odd that the documentary that a documentary demonizing white people chooses the music of dead white males to promote the show to potential audiences. Nonetheless, that's the way it is. Although they could have instead used rap music, perhaps they realized that rap is not yet up to the standards of Beethoven and Mozart. Although Showtime and its creators of and the creators of Everything Will Be All White are sponsoring lies that have the effect of dividing North Americans by race, it should be realized that a growing number of Blacks are rejecting the racist agenda of identity politics. In one recent example, a Canadian Black truck driver was told a video news reporter that he stood in solidarity with all of the trucker protesters, regardless of race. He considered them brothers and sisters in the fight to restore pre-pandemic pre freedoms to Canadian citizens and especially their descendants. Additionally, Black intelligentsia leaders such as Shelby Steele, Larry Elder, John McWhorter, Glenn Lowry, and Coleman Hughes are challenging erroneous and divisive agendas such as critical race theory and identity politics. Instead, they are enduring personal, they are endorsing personal responsibility and a solid work ethic. They also typically oppose affirmative action because racial preferences rob blacks of a sense of accomplishment and tend to leave whites doubtful of the abilities of those who benefit from affirmative action. Shelby Steele is with Stanford's Hoover Institution. Larry Elder received more votes in last year's recall election of California Governor Gavin Newsom than any other challenger. John McWhorter is teaching at Columbia University and recently became a columnist for the New York Times. Coleman Hughes is the youngest fellow at the Manhattan Institute. Glenn Lowry is a distinguished economics professor at Brown University. Although it is doubtful that any of them would promote Confederate memorials, they generally support traditional American values such as individual freedom and its coupled obligation for personal responsibility. In short, they tend to favor equality of individual opportunity over the outcome of uh, equality of outcome for racial groups collectively. In short, they their tenants will support a meritocracy. And that is the key thing for all of us here as Americans. Now, concerning Showtime's Everything Will Be All White documentary, as supreme potentate and ruler of my website, Civil War Chat, I hereby declare them canceled for appropriating the music of famous white males such as Mozart and Beethoven, whose prominence has lasted for more than 200 years years. Let me now share with you something that I think is important and you will find helpful. My book, Southern Reconstruction, $26 at Amazon's and Barnes and Noble. If you want an autograph copy, it's $29 for me and I will deliver it free of charge here in the United States. Southern Reconstruction tells the story of what really happened during Reconstruction. So let me just put one point briefly. Cotton, uh, the, um, the American South was the low cost producer of cotton uh, during the antebellum era. Uh, and the critics will say that was because of slavery. 
And, uh, but after the Civil War, the interesting thing is that the American South remained the low cost producer worldwide of cotton until at least the 1930s. What the Yankees did during the Civil War is they simply impoverished the entire South. They wanted the United States to be the low cost producer of cotton. And it remained that way until the 1930s. And um, the beneficiaries, the New England textile industry. So there you have it. Consider that, uh, you know, as you look at uh, the, the uh, aftermath of the Civil War, consider getting my book, Southern Reconstruction by Philip Lee. Okay, that's our show for today. And thanks for watching. See you next time.